But which teams are we really sleeping on? And it could be one of those teams that we're not really talking about that could go on to win the Lombardi Trophy uh, come February 2022. Well, to give us a little bit more insight on that, we wanted to bring in our buddy, a very good friend of the show, host of the Go For Glory podcast, which I'll include that link in the description after this live stream ends, Sean Landry. Sean, how you doing, my man? Doing well this morning. How are you? Hey, I can't complain, man. I am very, very appreciative that you're joining us on this episode and uh, giving us your insight because I asked you, who are three teams that we're really sleeping on? And uh, let's just go one by one. Let's let's talk about one and then let's stop, talk about them, and then let's go on to the next one. So who's your first team? So uh, the first team I've got, you know, you talked about it just a few moments ago, but ever since, uh, you know, the, the Rams have kind of been the talk of the town in the NFC West, I'm going to go with the Cardinals as a dark horse. And even though they are the uh, the top contender in the NFC, you know, you haven't really heard too much about them over the last few weeks, especially given the injuries to Kyler Murray. Uh, obviously, Colt McCoy has stepped in, done a really tremendous job for that team. So they're kind of flying under the radar right now just because so much of the media and the news has been surrounding the Rams and you know, all the big price talent they have out there. Obviously, they're not doing so well themselves, you know, given their losses past Sunday to Green Bay. Uh, so I've got the Cardinals as the, the first team, just because, you know, once Kyler does come back, you know, offensively, we know what Cliff Kingsbury can do offensively. They're going to be explosive. Defensive, as always, a little bit of youth mixed with some veteran leadership like J.J. Watt. Um, so I have the Cardinals as being the uh, first sleeper to, to really make it to the Super Bowl this year. I like it. And – I mean, with the Cardinals, maybe you could say that loss against Green Bay Packers was just a mess up on the part of A.J. Green, Kyler Murray, just none of that connection. Mm -hmm. But could they potentially beat the Green Bay Packers a second time? I think so. I, I really do. You know, obviously Green Bay is ailing right now. You know, yes, they are playing the best, best football in the league right now, even though Aaron is, is playing on a broken toe. Um, but I feel like, again, once Kyler comes back, you know, Kyler is the lifeblood of that offense. You know, Colt McCoy can only – can only extend drive so so much, but, you know, given Kyler's playmaking ability, and then obviously, you know, you do have a little bit of uh, that veterans on the line that you talked about with AJ Green and DeAndre Hopkins, they'll find time to gel. You know, obviously we look at last year, similar to Tampa Bay, uh, when Brady and Gronk and Antonio Brown came in, I mean, it, it took them until the bye week to really click on all cylinders. So I, I think this, this could be the same for the Cardinals as well. Yeah, the Cardinals are definitely a team that you do not want to count out. We actually did a Super mm -hmm. Bowl simulation. I think, Sean, you joined us for that show. But then later on, we did a whole computer mm -hmm. simulation for uh, when the NFL schedule was released. Uh, and our computer showed that the Cardinals and Titans would go to the Super Bowl. So, I mean, more than likely, that that is a possibility this year. Uh, yeah. Who's your second team as a dark horse? Uh, the second team I have as a dark horse is uh, no surprise. I feel like it's going to be the return of the empire. How about the Patriots? Uh, this morning on Get Up, uh, Tim Hasselbeck talked about whether or not he has enough confidence in Mac Jones leading them to the Super Bowl, and he said confidently yes, just because of the amount of success he's had so far. Um, they have a 19% chance to win to reach the Super Bowl, second best in the AFC. And uh, you can't, you can never count out Bill Belichick. You know, last year, you know, there was kind of a find your footing, so to speak, after you lose Tom Brady for 20 years. Uh, but this team, after ever since losing to Dallas earlier in the year, they've been on a six-game winning streak. Um, obviously, I'm sure you weren't happy to see them, um, you know, put a stomp into the to the birds a couple weeks ago. Uh, but I feel like the Patriots are in prime position. Then you'll find out what they are come on next Monday night when they, when they go up to Buffalo um, to play the Bills, who are also kind of starting to click on all cylinders too. So I, I really feel like that game Monday is going to ultimately decide the East. But I think it's also going to set the Patriots, should they win that game, in a very good position going into the postseason. And uh, who knows, we, we might finally get to see what everybody's been wanting to, to hope for, and that's a Patriots-Buccaneers Super Bowl, Brady versus Belichick, round two. That would be incredible to see. Uh, and you talk about the maturation process of Mac Jones compared to the beginning of the season to where he's really going on right now in full stride. We know this defense is good, but mm -hmm. do you think – at any point, there is any room for error for Mac Jones to really mess up. Like, can this hot string of games really last for the Patriots? Well, you know, Josh McDaniel said this morning, he said, you know, we're, we're waiting on a perfect game. And, you know, you really can't figure out, I mean, you can look at the rest of their schedule and you can, you can kind of see where a perfect game might land. But I feel like his margin for error is really small just because he's in a really great environment. He's in a winning culture. You know, Belichick prides himself on eliminating mistakes. Um, 
and really putting his players in a, in a position to be uh, successful on the field. And so with Mac Jones, you know, we're starting to see that, you know, him starting to transcend upward in a direction that I feel that he's not going to, he's not going to have a little, a little mistakes, if you will. But again, he's still a rookie and uh, you know, he'll learn and, and he'll mature, but he's definitely, he's definitely grown up before in our eyes these last six weeks. Absolutely. Mac Jones, Bill Belichick, Turn on the Empire, like I said, against Tom Brady and the Buccaneers would be amazing to see. Uh, mm-hmm. Who's your final team that could be a, a dark horse contender? So my final team, and shout out to my buddy Tyrell Floyd. Who day? Who day? Who day? Say they're going to beat them Bengals. I'm, I got the Cincinnati Bengals as my third dark horse team, and uh, you know, obviously the emergence of Joe Burrow in his second year. You know, last year he was starting to trend in an upward direction, and then obviously with the injury, you know, set them back. Uh, but they just put a wallop on the Steelers, 41 to 10. And even though they're second in the North right now, and we're all talking about Lamar Jackson and the, and the Ravens, I would not sleep on the Bengals just because, you know, they have the second highest odds to reach the Super Bowl, according to the fan side. And, uh, you know, they're just playing in all cylinders, offense, defense, you know, offense, you know, Joe Mixon, Jamar Chase, who Burrow's favorite target from college, and then, you know, recruited him to come play with him out in Cincinnati. Uh, but the Bengals are just, I just feel like they're just super talented, both on, you know, on the offensive side and on the defensive side with uh, Sam Hubbard and Trey Hendrickson, who as a Saints fan, it's hard to see him let go, but I'm a big Bengals fan too. I, I had to adopt them obviously with Joe going up there, but uh, you know, he's doing, he's doing wonders for that defense as well. The back, the secondary, they're playing on all cylinders. So I feel like the Bengals are in a really good chance uh, going forward to put themselves in a very good position in the postseason and, and may end up being in the Super Bowl. I mean, obviously, Russell Wilson, if, I, if my memory serves me correctly, he, he reached the Super Bowl in his second year. So just think of what that could be like for Joe Burrow, given the success they've had this year and uh, have really played some outstanding football thus far. Yeah, definitely. I'm a huge fan of Trey Hendrickson as well. Ten and a half sacks on the season so far. And mm-hmm. uh, in my opinion, was snubbed from the Pro Bowl last year for sure. Uh, this yeah. Bengals team, it's shifted more towards Joe Mixon running the ball in the last three weeks. Mm-hmm. Jamar Chase, Joe Burrow, they've kind of taken the step back. Uh, mm-hmm. In your opinion, do you think that this is the recipe, like running the ball? Is it passing the ball? Or do you think like, hey, whatever game script allows, we can do it all? Yeah, I feel like you need a healthy balance. You know, obviously, yeah, you're, you're right. You know, uh, Burrow and, and Chase have taken a step back. It's been more focused around Mixon, but... Uh, you don't want to allow yourself to be one dimensional. You want to have a healthy balance of the run and the passing attack, but obviously it's great to have a great running game right now because it sets you up for the play action pass. It puts you in a better position as opposed to the running game, getting stuffed and, and focusing so much on Joe bailing, bailing your, you out. And um, you know, I, I feel like they should continue to ride Mixon. If, if the run game is successful, keep doing it. But if you come to a point where, you know, he's starting to not pick up as much yardage. That's when you need to change things, kind of create a, a, a healthy balance of the run in the past. And uh, I feel like they can do that. I, I really, Zach Taylor is doing a great job up there in Cincy. So I feel like they'll find a way to create a balance if for some reason, Joe, um, his numbers start to decline just because of, of teams starting to figure out their run game. Absolutely. So the Cardinals, Patriots, and the Bengals are the three dark horse teams via Sean Landry. Sean, I'm going to let you go, but before I let you go, uh, mm-hmm. give us a little bit of a plug, go for glory. Where can we find you? So you can find me on Podbean. I'll admit I have not been on there since the beginning of the season. Um, been a little bit busy with the home life and work life as well, but, uh, you can check me out on Podbean. It's free to subscribe, free to download, and, uh, I'll hopefully get back on there soon. Obviously right now, even if I was doing it, given, given the saints, uh, track record this season, I probably wouldn't have a lot of good things to talk about, but, um, you know, hopefully for everybody out there, I looked at your chat this morning. A lot of people are asking questions about should they start Hill or Ingram or Kamara. Um, you touched on it earlier. Sean said he's not, you know, he's not for sure who he's going to go with tomorrow night. Hopefully Taysom Hill is the guy because I cannot watch another week of Trevor Simeon. So, um, but you can, again, the podcast, you can find on Podbean, free to subscribe, free to download. And um, I hope to be back on pretty soon once my schedule frees me up to do so. Absolutely. Always a pleasure to have on Sean Landry. I'll include that link in the description right after this live stream ends. Sean, always a pleasure. We'll connect after the show. Sounds good. Talk to you soon. And that is Sean Landry, guys, that is joining us for that episode of Time 2 Football, giving us a uh, little bit of a preview between uh, the Super Bowl, from now in the Super Bowl, who's going to be making that transition into being that dark horse contender. Very, very appreciative of him joining us.